She know that I wanna be good for you. She know that I wanna be good for you. Hello everyone and welcome back to Always Watching. For those of you new to this channel, I review all things movie and TV. So if you like what you hear, subscribe, comment, and like the video. So Succession episode two, Kendall Unhinged. Right, like F around and find out. Like as soon as he accepted that call or ended that call and he started doing a slow walk and he got the smile on his face and his inner joker came out. Like we know Lucas is unhinged, but Kendall is hella unhinged. Like we know what that man can do. Like if anybody can burn it to the ground, it's our boy Kendall, right? So I just knew like as soon as he called him, like he could have called Roman, he could have called anyone in the world. But the minute you call Kendall, it's like you want to ruin everything, you know, like you're doing that on purpose. So I think the honeymoon phase with the kids are over. Like Shiv, Roman and Kendall are way too selfish and too self-interested to, you know, stick together. I think the effects of Italy are wearing off and they're back to, they're back to their old ways. They're back to doing what they normally do, which is looking out for themselves. I think Logan said it best when he said, you know, I love you, but you are not serious people. And essentially what he's saying, that summarizes their entire relationship, right? Like this is, this is a joke, right? Like they're, they're about to burn it all down for nothing. And they, these kids have been so desperate to get their father back. You know, they, they've tried to force him to pick a successor. It hasn't worked. And now they're trying to prove that they're worthy. Like this idea that they're going to buy a company and then head the company. And by virtue of heading a company, they're worthy of running a company. It's a bit silly and it's a bit childish, right? Like they're not, they're not business people, right? And they never will be. And I think a part of Logan's frustration is the reason they're doing all this is that it's a tantrum, right? Like his kids use money to kind of play on their relationship. Whereas Logan is using money and engaging in business. Like it's life or death. Like that's the difference, right? So he's seeing his kids do all this. Like why? Because you're mad at me. You're gonna blow this deal up because what you're pissed off and you want an apology like that's kind of how he approached them so we'll start with the kids first so shiv is becoming a bit unhinged by the divorce we find out that tom has basically you know hired like she, she can't get access to any divorce lawyer right she's trying to speed this up but this is taking a lot longer than she had anticipated and i'm not sure how much of that is tom and how much of that is her father like we know when her father gets divorced, he like has scorched earth policy and he just gets rid of everyone. But in this case, I'm not sure because Logan is very much invested in Tom. So I don't think he likes the idea of them getting divorced. I think he's hoping, or both of them are kind of hoping that, you know, Shiv is throwing a tantrum. Like eventually she'll kind of get over it and she'll try to work it out with him. And, you know, near the end, you can see a moment when she, she thinks about calling Tom. So they're, they're hoping if they can kind of delay the process, you know, like something good will come out of it. So I think Logan giving Tom this advice, he doesn't want them to get divorced. The episode begins on the eve of a new era, right? Like they're about to go through this massive deal. And it seemed like a sure thing, right? Like what was once a sure thing no longer isn't. And up until this point, everybody seemed perfectly happy with, you know, cutting this deal and going their separate ways. And, you know, this, this idea of blowing up the deal, like I'm not sure with the kids, like on one hand, it's a good idea to ask for more money. That makes sense. On the other hand, I don't think it's about the money. I think they've made it their personality trait to get back at their father. So this whole thing about go ask for more money is in part to make his life a living hell. And this whole idea of them being unserious, I mean, they are unserious. So the first thing, Shiv calls Sandy as soon as she finds out that she's unable to get a divorce lawyer. So it did feel like very impulsive. She calls the night before. So what I can understand is during this entire period while this deal was going down, Sandy has been trying to, they've been trying to get more money. Like a lot of people have tried to get Logan to go ask for more money, but he said no. So these kids have, have no idea that this is happening. They've kind of stepped in and they said, hey, maybe we can do this. You know what I mean? Like it's just kind of childish. So the way this, this opportunity came about, it did start very impulsively. You have Shiv kind of talking to Sandy out of nowhere the night before a massive deal. And then you have Roman and Kendall watching Pierce News, trying to make it great again. And the thing is, they're not CEOs, right? Like watching Kendall talk about Sub-Saharan Africa, international, hyper-local, what is hyper-local news? 
I don't know what that means. You know, like we're gonna teach people how to watch the news. Like the things that come out of his mouth. That's the thing. Like, even if they bought this company, what would they do to it? You know, like they 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 think the only thing they have to do is have hot people and cool graphics. Like that's essentially their money making strategy. And it's childish and it's weird. So when they are finally ready to go to Connor's rehearsal dinner, they find out that their ride has been hijacked. And watching Connor, Shiv, and Kendall just stranded, they literally were like, what do we do without our helicopter? And I think this is a part of the problem, right? Like, I don't think Logan really, like these kids have never wanted for anything and, and they've never had to do anything. So they never had to imagine a situation where they wouldn't have a helicopter or a car waiting. You know, it kind of makes me wonder why he didn't do this before because the audacity with these kids is because they can't imagine themselves having nothing. You know, these, these are theoretical exercises. And I think had, if they could imagine it, they might not be making the moves that they're making, right? Like watching Roman be like, get a car. Like that's a vehicle. Like what are you gonna do when you can't get a car? You know, like th these things don't really occur to them in any way. And so Connor's rehearsal dinner was quite sad. Right, so it seems there's a rift in his and Willow's relationship. Now, why she was sad, why she was shook, maybe she's pregnant, maybe he ran out of money, maybe there's some other drama that we're unaware of. I didn't realize how jealous Connor was. Like, he seems very possessive. Like, the whole thing about tracking her phone, knowing where she's going. Like, that, that was a bit concerning, and it, it didn't actually fit was what I, who I thought he was, because he just seemed like a pretentious rich guy. Like, I don't, I don't know, the fact that he was tracking her phone, like, clearly he feels like he owns her, you know, in some way. And, you know, something happened. He, I, I feel like he made a request that didn't go over so well. Throughout this episode, he's a presence, but he's a non-presence. You know, it's interesting because he's treated like an unwanted stepchild, like he's not on the board. And the way he moves, right, like his, he might not be his father's favorite, but he doesn't want to be hated by his father, right? Like Connor doesn't move as freely as these other kids. Like Connor kind of takes the money and shuts up, you know, like he sits in the corner. And I think a lot of the reason for that, again, is because it's almost like lucky to be there, you know, like he, he would never have been considered a successor. It seems like his father never took any real interest in him. He kind of supports him because he's not problematic. When they return to New York, Shiv, Connor, Shiv, Roman, and Kendall are ambushed by Sandy and Stewie, and they're trying to pitch it to them. It's like the night before, and they're like, okay, what do you want to do? And the whole time they're trying to console <laughs> poor Connor, they're like trying to, 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 to figure out what to do. In the beginning, Kendall said no, Roman said no, right? Like they were adamant that this is a joke, and they all understood the type of man they were dealing with, which is like, this is not a guy you want to be like dangling a carrot in front of because maybe there won't be a, maybe there won't be a carrot. So they kind of hedged their bets. They're like, okay, we'll make Connor feel better while talking about this the whole night, right? So this idea of going from bar to karaoke, like you have no idea how the other half live, right? Like that's the other thing. Like if this was their everyday life, they just would not know what to do with themselves. Like they entered a bar. You could tell Connor has never tried anything less than a certain amount of money. Shiv was talking about the nozzle. You know, like they're just so unaware of their privilege. It's actually really, it's really funny. So just before the karaoke bar, the turning point for me happens in this bar when Kendall gets a phone call from Lucas. And this phone call came out of nowhere, right? Like I think it came out of nowhere even for Kendall because he was like, what? Like he just went outside to answer the call. And the whole time he's talking to him, like Lucas seemed unhinged. And right? he basically threatens Kendall. He said, listen, I've heard that people are trying to get you involved. So it would be in your best interest to stay out of it. He almost, and he also threatens the deal they have on the table. He says, you know, I've, I heard you've been offering old lady, you know, old ladies, you know, suitcases full of money. So I think the threat that Lucas was making was, if I don't buy ETN, you best believe I'm going to buy this other, like I'm going to buy Pierce, right? Like that, that was kind of the vibe Lucas was giving me. But Lucas sitting there with his Coca-Cola, like he just looked, he looked kind of nervous. You know, and he was nervous, I'm not sure, because maybe he himself doesn't really know what he would do until the last minute. Shout out to Kendall. You know, Kendall has been very interesting, and I'm, I'm interested to see how his out outfits change. Because right now, he's had this whole Buddha thing. You know, like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, like Kendall's whole look is just, he doesn't even know who he is. Like, he, he he's not wearing a suit. He's kind of taken on some of his father's 
mannerisms with the hat and the sunglasses, but he's so lost, like he doesn't really have much of an identity and he's trying to get one back. So as soon as he hangs up the phone with Lucas, I think the thought going through his head was one of two things, either, ooh, we can really F this up. Or maybe he was sensing some desperation from Lucas. Like maybe Lucas isn't as confident. Like maybe we can push him for some more money because if Lucas was confident, why would he call him? Right, so I, I think Kendall's gear started turning now we know our boy Kendall has poor instincts. So, so I was just like, this is the last man you want to call. Kendall's decision not to tell the siblings, for me, nailed all their coffins. Like this was the moment where their alliance was dead. I mean, dead in the water. Like if Kendall had told them that Lucas had called and said these things, for sure they would have said no. You know, I don't think they would have agreed to this because this is a massive risk. So he just starts to manipulate everyone and he kind of makes it seem like it's Shiv's idea. Like, you know, like as if he's coming around to the whole thing. When in fact that phone call is what convinced them to come around. And they've, they've been kind of all doing this thing where they tell these small lies to one another. But there's a difference between wishing your father a happy birthday to having a whole conversation that risks your entire inheritance like the levels to this was just kind of like insane you know the idea that they were going to force logan back to the table it, it is it is troublesome because you know they're just like you need to go ask for more 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 like that's the thing with these kids it's, it's just more and more they they know how to consume but they don't know how to let go right so and they're not the ones asking for it right like they're basically saying dad go do the dirty work for us because we're too dumb to do it Right, so they're just kind of opening up this, this black hole that, you know what I mean? They, they kind of leave a mess and they, they walk away and they're expecting their father to clean it up. Before we talk about this karaoke scene, we need to discuss Logan. So Logan, you know, he, he, he was sort of breaking down this entire episode. The episode begins and Logan is feeling kind of, kind of nervous, kind of anxious, kind of, he's not happy. Right? and he feels like he's one day away from being erased off the face of the planet right like in 24 hours he his company will no longer be his company and i think the act of taking the helicopter away from his kids it was a bit petty i think he was kind of pmsing that morning you know kind of like ugh. like he, he's just kind of doing what it, like he was trying to roast them without roasting them i don't know how to describe it like he was just kind of like annoyed with everyone like he's gonna spend the last 24 hours basically going over to ATN and monitoring the floor, right? He's like, what does he say? Sur surprise, you clock watching F. And the thing about Logan, he has a very old school mentality, like this idea of surveying your employees 24 seven, making sure you're milking them for every penny that they're worth, you know, like that we need to be more efficient. We need to be like the way he was walking around on the floor was super interesting because the person who was supposed to be there apparently never stays late for opera season right like that person isn't even really there and i think this whole thing with wearing sunglasses like he was trying to feel both important and unseen right like he's like kind of acting like okay everyone go on and act like i'm not here you know like go on and act like I, I, i'm not even here right and uh, but at the same time it's like he just wants to observe people but he doesn't want to interact with them Right, like there's still that higher hierarchy where I'm watching you, but you can't see me. Like it, it was, it was just ridiculous. And I think Tom perfectly explains the situation, right? So as soon as Tom hears that Logan is on the floor, he runs back. He's in a panic, and the future is now, as he describes, right? Like Logan is 24 hours away from being, you know, kind of erased, and he needs something to do right he needs a new function he needs some type of purpose and uh logan's speech was really interesting because i don't think it hit in the way that he thought it did like this kind of old school thinking you know this very aggressive like he kind of stands up you know the man of the people and a lot of what he says is not relevant right like you need to do this for me uh, i'm gonna stay here i'm gonna push you to your limit like the thing is people don't really have company loyalty anymore like the idea of being you know we work for this ceo or we work like that kind of era of taking pride in the person you work with the company you work with it no longer exists right like people are freelancing people are really loyal to different companies so the way he was talking you know as if he, he's someone they they revere or would would die for was really interesting to me and the thing is with journalism like yeah it's a numbers game right like he, he he's talking about killing the opponent 
getting their numbers up but this isn't this isn't like kind of relevant you know like it's just not like kill them how you know like what's the plan here so again he's thinking in terms of like this very old school like even the language was quite aggressive it was quite off-putting you know like you're all effing pirates like you cannot talk to someone that way in this day and age without being reported right so i i think he was trying so hard to feel important and to feel relevant and they were all clapping and it was a great speech i'm not gonna lie the speech was freaking amazing but it just wasn't appropriate given the time period that we're in so it seems like he's here to do two things first he's trying to find his purpose and second i guess he's trying to find carrie a job so this whole time we thought carrie was trying to get pregnant and that maybe he wanted another baby but i guess she wants a job i, I don't like carrie's character i don't like her aesthetic like she's not appealing or she's not anything to me i don't know how you guys feel about her but i don't find her to be interesting like her character is interesting because she's very common in this world like a lot of very rich men have carries like these kind of assistants that masquerade as lovers like and she's like the proto prototype for that you know like she's so self-important but it's like who gave you that level of self-importance and i think her proximity to logan has made her kind of delusional like i i really think she thought she had him wrapped around her finger until the end right until he realized like damn like i i there's no controlling this man at all and she's not a good anchor right she's awkward she has weird mannerisms she smiles inappropriately and i was surprised they put her on the air like that like you do not just put people on the air that's really embarrassing right like you're gonna be the talk of the town like that like you put somebody on national television that has no experience you didn't test them or anything like it's really that's that's a massive oversight like it's not a small thing right and everybody noticed right like people were at, were at home noticing right so it doesn't make logan look stable that he put a sugar baby on tv like that's quite uh disturbing and of course nobody will tell logan that she's a joke right but he understands that she's a joke and i think the reason he removed her is because he didn't want to be seen as incompetent because his reputation is everything right like at this point he's been seen as a serious businessman but it takes you know in this world it takes one thing to just eradicate that you know so putting your girlfriend who can't speak on air is not a good decision i love logan's conversation with tom so he approaches tom and he says what do you think the whole thing with logan is he's very smart because he doesn't want to he doesn't want to get in trouble if something happens right he doesn't take accountability for her in any way right it's, he's doing her a favor he doesn't want anyone to like in case the favor backfires he doesn't want to be attached to it in any way and tom is worth every penny like he that the way he broke it down to logan is why he gets paid the big dollars like his diplomacy skills the way he's able to calmly break it down listen we put new talent too early you know like maybe she has a lot to learn like tom tom is worth every dollar every penny every every nook and you know who's not worth anything is cousin greg tom being the intelligent man that he is outsources the responsibility of fire and carry to greg and i think tom really enjoys greg's presence because you know, he can outsource a lot of these menial tasks to him because a lot of like tom is the guy who fixes things right he's the guy who breaks the bad news and he's kind of slowly becoming more relevant to logan that he i don't think he wants to deal with these things anymore so he's he's offloading it to greg but greg is not as refined or nearly as sophisticated as tom and when he calls carrie in he does such a terrible job right she susses him out right away he he's trying like tom gives him a few sort of things he can use to help break the news and the way that greg is talking like there's no coherence like oh um do you want people to do you want to be seen as someone moving through the ladder something about a focus group like it's not coherent like he was supposed to take the best ideas and formulate it on his own but he's literally unable to communicate clearly to her and she calls him out right away right she susses him out right away and it was that moment she realized that this family is all the way messed up logan at this point is totally fed up and i feel like he's been going around trying to make himself useful trying to do things but it's not really helping his situation and the closer he's getting to this deal it seems like he's getting cold feet right like he doesn't even want to take photo ops with lucas right he, he doesn't want to finalize it emotionally 
Like he he, he kind of has this attitude where like, well, it's not done yet. I don't want to take pictures. Like he, he's kind of resisting. There's a lot of resistance here. I think again, he doesn't want people to think he's he's gone, right? Like he still wants them to feel like he's in charge. Like until the fat lady sings. Logan finds out his his kids could possibly mess up this deal. I couldn't tell if he was happy or if he was like frustrated by the whole thing. Like that was very difficult to tell. Like. He seemed to be like, he had mixed emotions. And you know, he, he's getting older. You know, he keeps expressing like he doesn't know, he doesn't know anymore. He doesn't know where the world is going. He's, he's getting worse at predicting the future and controlling the people around him. Like he doesn't seem to be getting any better at this. And it seems like people are better at forcing his hand than he is at forcing like their hand. So the fact that Logan had to go to this cheap karaoke bar to essentially grovel to his children and be like, please don't do this deal, was really just ridiculous. That, that was a sight to see. So Logan has the impression that all I have to do is apologize and this will go away. And Logan's apology is the closest I've seen to sorry, not sorry. That, I, you know, like, I, I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not that sorry. Like he was really like doing the bare minimum there. I think being in that room, like he kind of missed being roasted by his kids. Right, like he, he was kind of like, he wasn't as combative as he normally was. Like he was going through withdrawal, not being around them. And you know, the love that he has for his kids is the same love that someone would have for their property or their car, right? Like there isn't any actual emotional love behind it. And I think Logan has this weird monetary idea of family, right? Like you can buy a house, like you can buy a family, right? And although he, it's interesting because he kept his kids with him. Right, he didn't dump them on the on the mom, and I think a lot of the reason that he he kept his children and and parented them the way they he did is because he he felt like no matter what they will they will be loyal to him. Like he has this idea that his kids belong to him and they should kind of do what he says, but it's not working out that way. And the whole time he's apologizing, they're asking like, "What are you apologizing for?" Right, like it's a very superficial apology. They don't really get to Italy. They don't really get to, you know, like they're trying to to get to the root cause, right? Like basically saying you were a bad father. I don't think Logan has ever, ever reflected on his time as a father. Like, I don't think this is something he feels he has to do. Like it's very old school thinking. Like I provided you with food and shelter. You've never wanted for anything. So what's emotional support? You know, like you're, you're gonna bash me on that. Like you guys are ungrateful. Like he sees his children as very ungrateful and he, he's not a guy who will ever reflect deeply in terms of why his kids feel the way they do about him like he doesn't really have the patience or even list the, the 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 frame of mind to assess to, to assess his relationship with his children in that way this conversation is the closest logan will ever get to expressing any kind of love for his children like we will never get any closer than we did this night like he actually says like i missed you at my party you know i love you but like he had to add the but but it was a very interesting conversation because I felt Logan was being very transparent. You know, like there was that kind of like, he started off talking about the personal before he went to the business, but in doing so, he had something to get off his chest and he did. You know, he didn't apologize for the things they really wanted him to apologize, like the thing with the helicopter. And that's very superficial. Like, he's kind of like, well, I guess that would annoy me too. Like he, he's kind of apologizing in a way that's like, I mean, you would have done the same. Like, like he, he's not actually, he doesn't understand why they're deep. And maybe that's it, right? Like he doesn't really get why they're truly angry with him. You know, watching them argue with their father, like I don't think Shiv, Roman, and Kendall are coming from a rational place. So like Shiv especially was super upset. She was super angry. You know, she kind of lashed out at him for giving Tom divorce advice. And I think Shiv's frustration with her father, a lot of it has to do with the divorce. Right, she really kind of wants to get back at him. Like, I don't think this is about the deal or with the money. Kendall's angry because of that conversation in Italy, right? When he's like, we have to make our own pile. Like, that was so petty. I was like, sis, like the only person who was sympathetic, Roman and Connor. But again, the tone of this conversation, it just seemed like these kids all had a beef and this was a way of getting back at him. Like, this was not a business conversation. By the end of the conversation, Logan is unable to hide his contempt and he says, I love you all, but you are not serious people, right? He's basically like, the bottom line is like, I've been doing this for a long time. And this guy, he's not going to be pushed, right? He's not going to be pushed. And as much as you want to doubt me, this is the situation. 
And, it, and it's really interesting watching them because the reason everybody goes along with Logan is because he's right, right? Like they go along with him because he's two steps ahead, right? These, these past sort of episodes, he hasn't been, but generally speaking, he's very good at getting ahead of the problem, right? So when he leaves his children, it seems like Logan is almost rejuvenated, right? He seems to have like a skip in his step, right? He's kind of like going into damage control. He's trying to get ahead of it. Again, that's why he's very good. Like he's reacting to the hell that's about to come down on them. I thought the, the decision to exclude Jerry and replace Jerry with Roman was really interesting because he needs someone from the family when he goes and talks to Lucas. And he also needs a way to break up these three because the longer these three stay together, the more chaos they seem to cause. And I also don't blame Roman for coming over, to be honest, like this has been exhausting. At least Roman has been transparent. Like, I don't think he was working with his father this entire time. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he, he kind of came as a way of like bridging the, the olive branch. And the reason that Logan wants Roman is because Roman will be the one to watch the floor, right? There's no way Logan can come into ATN every day and watch what everybody's doing, right? That's just something interesting. Like smart people know who they are. Right, and, and that's really the problem. Like none of, the, none of these kids know who they are outside of their father. They have no personality aside from Waystar, aside from being Logan's successor. Like they don't know who they are because their father tells them who they are, right? He, he, he's basically like, you're lost. Let me help you be found. It was a great episode. You guys let me know what you think and until next time. You know that I wanna be good for you. You know that I want to be good for you 